welcome or welcome back. I'm Robin Robin. I have a small crochet business called Sweet Beans Crochet and I go to markets uh, to sell my plushies. I'm located in Florida, so some of the prices you may see, I'm in Florida, uh, South Florida to be exact. So that's where I am, that's what I do. If you're ready to watch a market video, grab a whip, some coffee, let's hang out. I make long videos so I could be your background, we could hang out, uh, welcome in. I'm here to give you guys some closure for last week. Uh, so I just wanted to show you some fun things. Uh, the little bunny I repaired uh, was local. The ears got ripped and tugged out from last weekend. So I made it a little band-aid and I fixed the ears. So I'm gonna be giving this back to the girl tonight with my business card and this little baggie. So I'm gonna go deliver this today. I'm going to be adjusting my display a little bit. I've got three tables and obviously decorations for my tent uh, right now. I'm going to be getting a couple other things. I've been, I've had my eye on them, but I finally am ready to pull the trigger and order these things. So I just wanted to bring you along. I'm going to be doing a market mock-up setup, which I have not done yet uh, since my first video. So I'm going to be doing a mock-up later this week. And I still have one more pattern test to do, so I'm gonna bring you along. I'm in the middle of another project right now, but here is one of the pattern tests that I just finished. This is Baby Dragon Ivy from Cozy Wonder Crochet. Cindy's amazing, her patterns are so cute. This might already be released by the time we talk, but right now it's not released. So cute. So that's what I'm working on. I'm gonna do another Ivy with Safety Eye, um, Safety Eyes. These are really quick. Honestly, I'm going to time myself to see if I can recommend this to you guys. I mean, I've kind of decided I'm going to be doing a new system for how I decide what items I'm going to bring to markets. I'm going to be making stuff I want to make. <laughs> so uh, instead of me looking at like what's popular, what, what people want, I'm still going to be choosing animals that people want, but I'm going to be doing styles like this. So like tiny, um, not $5, like 20 and up dollar, but under 30. So 20 to $30 items that do take more time, but are personal. Cause these are like keepsakes, right? So I have siblings and these are like little keepsakes for them. And so I'm thinking that's kind of the stuff I want to focus on because I really enjoy making it. Uh, it's not too big. It's not too tiny and they're cuddleable and super cute. So this is kind of the style that I'm going to be going for when I, I'm going to be market, you know, market prepping or making stuff for the future. Just wanted to share the little baby with you and i do have to put in a yarn order for premiere at some point that probably won't get delivered um for a while but i do have to see what colors i have and place an order i have to start getting ready for the day because clearly i'm not but look oh my goodness um i obviously i'm at the beginning of samba but i didn't give it sleepy eyes Oop. And I am dying. It's so cute. Well, it looks kind of crazy now that I'm looking at it on camera, but I can see what it's going to become. And she's going to be so cute. Look at that long nose. I want to just say I am not even done with this pattern yet. And it is the cutest thing I feel like I've ever made. Everything that I make becomes the cutest. Um, but when I was watching Melly, Melly's video, Melly Inspired Crochet, she's the pattern creator for Samba. Uh, she said in one of her videos that this is her favorite pattern ever and that she's biased because she made it but like It's so simple and so beautiful you guys And it's making the cutest plushie and every time i'm like when I pause and i'm pushing like the feet up I'm doing a really bad job at showing you I'll show you when i'm done, but it's just so Cute and it's um, such a cute little baby and i'm having a hard time mentally like choosing what to price this at So i'm definitely gonna have to make another one to time myself and weigh the yarn because I don't know what I would price this at. I've been taking a lot of breaks in between here, but it is so cute. Let me also just say that because it is no sew, there's basically like no leftover yarn. Like I don't have a bunch of cut cuttings. This is the only cutting I have from the entire project. And this is really satisfying. Just wanted to share that with you. So I'm gonna weigh it and find out how much yarn Samba used. But this just steals my heart. But now that I think I have a market this weekend, I have to like actually make a list of stuff that I have to make. <laughs> so, ah! Hey, I just finished filming the tutorial to paint safety eyes, so go check that out uh, if it's if you haven't already looked at it. 
<sighs> if you're interested. So while I'm on here, I just wanted to pop in um, to this vlog and let you guys, I'm gonna answer some questions. <laughs> So not that I've been asked a ton of questions in the comment section, but I have been asked a couple. Uh, so I think I'm just going to do like a little like, hey, here's who I am. This is about me um, because I never like introduced myself or really talked. I mean, you guys are like slowly finding stuff out as the videos go because things are happening. Like I have a fiance. Uh, we've been together for five years and he has a seven year old daughter. So she lives with us half the time. And we have a dog named Canela, two bunnies, Maui and Hinata. So that's my family. Um, I am 23 years old and I play, other than crocheting, I play video games and watch anime. So um, if you're interested or if you do these things too, then oh my goodness, you're my people. But uh, I really love the color pink. I love my bunnies and... I have to say Naruto or Demon Slayer are my favorite anime. Um, I'm in the middle of watching a couple of them right now. So I'm in the middle of watching One Punch Man, Attack on Titan, and Seven Deadly Sins. I'm also watching Black Clover. So I'm like watching all these intermittently. Uh, the video games I play, I play League of Legends, a lot of League of Legends. Um, and I'm actually gonna be naming the first line of safety eyes that I create after um, Runeterra regions. So these would be like Demacia. I'm gonna have purple will be the void. Um, I know I wanted, I, don't, I can't make red safety eyes. I haven't made red ones that look good yet, but I want red to be Sharima. I think that would just be perfect. And maybe gold, I guess could be Sharima. Okay, but so I play League of Legends um, and that's a passion. I also, on the PC, play Overwatch and Minecraft uh, and Sims. Not so much anymore, but play those. And on the Switch, I play Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I am pretty far in the game to a point where I don't want to finish the game and I'm just doing other stuff to avoid finishing the game. <laughs> uh, so Tears of the Kingdom is amazing. I've never played Stardew Valley, but I keep seeing it pop up and I really want to play that it just looks so so cute i play i played all of mario odyssey and i'm trying to think of other switch games i watched my fiance play a lot of games he he games too that's where i got all this from <laughs> but i watch him play video games so he plays like fortnite and stuff so I watch him play those. The reason I started this Q&A, I forgot, uh, was because someone in the comment section had asked me how I find events for crochet. So just to answer that question real quick, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can find events in your area. So number one, which I found a couple this way, was on Google typing in your city and then events or market uh, or craft and, or craft fair, and p things will pop up. So Google, like we'll find stuff from even like people's like nonprofit websites or like if it's like an event website. So Google is one way. Another way is Facebook events. So I found success through there too. And once you find an event, honestly, or if you see one in your town posted, you can follow those people and then at any point you can apply to be a vendor for them. Also, if you have a farmer's market in your town, you can type in your city and farmer's market and apply there. Normally the city website or the city farmer's market website will have a vendor application part. So you just have to submit an application. And typically if you have to submit an application for it, at least in my area, it's juried. So they have like a certain number of artists for each category. So they're not going to have a bunch of crochet artists. They're going to have a certain number of them so that they don't have too many. Whereas a non-juried, which are all the events I've gone to have been non-juried events. Uh, they don't block anyone off. Anyone can apply. Anyone can come. So you just have to pay them the money and you can come and set up and sell. So I haven't done a juried event yet. And I think that's going to be one of the milestones on my journey. I just haven't dedicated because you have to you have to pay um, an application fee and you don't get it back so I want to make sure my application is perfect before I apply submit the fee and then can't get the money back that's personally where I'm at so that's how I find events Facebook events is honestly really helpful or your city uh, farmers market or there's like flea markets too you could type in flea market 
Not that you want to sell at a flea market necessarily because that's not really the people who are going to be buying specialty handmade plushies, but it's an option, especially if you're in a good area. Oh, hi, Hinata. Hi. My bunny got out. Hi. Pretty girl. Yeah, I just wanted to pop in here, answer some questions or just like get to know you or get to know me let you guys know some stuff about me because I never introduced myself to the channel but that's me if anyone's curious by the way I'm gonna be selling these safety eyes so if anyone wants to purchase any <laughs> um I'm gonna have the link in the description box below I have not sold any eyes yet it's just um it's a dream of mine Hey, just wanted to go over all the stuff that I've made today already. I didn't really talk to you guys, I don't think. I made Ivy, so I finished her sleeping. And then I made her brother, <laughs> uh, her boyfriend, I don't know. But I made him a boy, I think. So I have these two. And then I made, oh no, a Samba. You guys, Samba. I mean, when I was making him, I was like freaking out. But I cannot believe this little cutie. Look at him. Look at him just sitting there with the little feet. This kills me. This is just so cute. I think I had no idea I would love like the legs the most out of this entire pattern. But it's like the cutest thing. And the bobbles. Melly did an amazing job at um, creating this pattern. Just wanted to show you guys that. That's all the stuff I've made today. I gotta put some more stuff on the hook. I think I'm gonna make uh, the cow, Huey the cow. It is Wednesday and I just finished the face for Huey. So I'm making a strawberry cow and I did the horns. So I'm gonna go home and finish him up. Morning, it is Wednesday morning, March 6th, I believe. I uh, just wanted to share with you guys all the stuff I did last night. So after I do these things, which I'm almost done with the last one, I can really make some bunnies for the, like, Easter, but I like bunnies anyway. Uh, for, hopefully I have a market this weekend. I haven't actually signed up officially yet, but I'm prepping mentally. So uh, here are some of the makes that I did last night. So this is Huey, the strawberry cow. Um, he's got a heart on his back and Huey is such a cute pattern a lot of sewing though um, so next time if I do this again and I wanted to you know make it no so it'd, it'd be easily no so uh, if you really wanted but Huey precious uh, that is by at Dawn crochet I think I did that right and then crochet by Janina this is the Stardew Valley ostrich those little legs kill me, you guys. So that's the ostrich uh, from Crochet by Janina. And then this is a peg doll. So there's like all four seasons. I started with fall. So I'm gonna give her, I think she's a little leaf. And then there's four other dresses. So I'm gonna make all the cloaks for the peg doll. That's what I made last night. Let me bring you in and show you guys how I'm doing um, or what I'm gonna be doing with the spreadsheet. So let me get the, I have a bag of plushies in here. So, oh Lord, it's heavy. Lord help us. Oh. Okay, let's just pretend like I didn't just cause an avalanche. Okay, <laughs> so I have this whole thing full of plush and I'm going to pull up, so this is square right now, um, I'm going to pull up inventory and adjust inventory. I don't know if you guys would enjoy like me showing you the screen of how I do square. Um, I don't know if it'd be that interesting to you or if you guys already do it or you don't, you know, whatever. That's, that's how I do inventory. So I'm going to be doing square inventory, uh, fixing all the stuff and let's see I had to do something else I'm just blanking as I need to do it 
so there's square inventory and then there's oh the crochet with bay um uh, google spreadsheet that's what it is so i'm gonna be filling out the crochet with bay mm. spreadsheet because i do have new things that i've created i mean i've already shown you guys some of them but like kato from last video um absolutely freaking love this dragon but i'm going to price tag her i don't even know what i would charge that's you know that's like the hard part and then the ivies i showed you earlier uh, i want to make like them in every single color but i feel like i want to do that like for this week because i have set the markets on saturday so i want to make like all the cover colors of ivy but because easter is so close i feel like i have to make bunnies i mean i like to make bunnies but now that i'm making ev ivy sorry i'm on like a kick so i really just want to make a bunch of them so i don't know if i should make a bunch of those or just bunnies because i know bunnies it's time for those and then samba so i'm gonna put these in the spreadsheet price them out and everything else in that bucket is already normal uh what i wanted to do oh the reason i brought up square the reason i wanted to talk to you guys about it is because i'm gonna start adding skew numbers um so let me just show you. Uh, this is like one plushie that I bring. <laughs> He's been to a couple markets now. Uh, this is the um, Dusty the Dragon. This is a Mom and Me Minis pattern. And these are like my price tags. So normally I'll just use a piece of yarn. So I've got like Big Twist. I think it's Big Twist acrylic yarn. And I cut that to size for their arms. And then I'm trying to focus on the tag here, not myself. So one side has my logo on it and then you open it up and it's the price. So made, it says made with love and then the price and a heart. And then this is the caution for safety eyes. So what I want to do is maybe on the side with my logo, I don't, I don't want to ruin it. I think it looks pretty, but I'm going to hand write, at least on the ones that I already have, a skew. So I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start at one. So I'm thinking the tiny things like leg baby leggy froggies and little whales because I make those and that's what I bring to every market. Those will be like when items one and two and then everything else will just go up from there. So like the snugglers would, I mean, they would end up being later on the skew list because they're like the bigger things. But uh, the skew stuff, the way that that is supposed to help is A, with like taxes. So for next year, which I want to make that easier on myself and B... Uh, I'm really excited to have like when I'm at a market like Papa or my family when they come with me to help me uh, charge people so I think I'm gonna invest in the square POS which is where you plug your iPad in to they have it at a lot of like stores like boba shops have it all the time but you plug in your iPad and then the other side is like it's an actual like POS like screen for them to tap and interact with so I think I might invest in that just so that when I have someone with me they can help me do it because when it's on my phone they can't no one wants to do that so at least m the people that I go with so if I get this like square POS I think it's like 200 and something dollars so it's a big investment um, not very risky because of my last market I did so well I'd just be reinvesting in the business so that's personally where I'm at I'm really grateful that that happened so that I can do stuff like this. So I'm looking forward to updating my display, which is something that I help it, like reinvesting in, um, which you guys will see soon. I, it looks like part of it will get delivered. There's this um, like a grid wall. It's a, it's a flexible grid wall, so it can go anywhere in the tent. And I also got side walls to make it like a little boutique store. So I got a couple things to really elevate um, that I reinvested financially in. Also, I think I'm investing in the square POS thing. So what my thought process is with the SKUs and the POS is if I have the iPad, then whoever's helping me can just look at the tag, see that the SKU is number five. They'll type in number five instead of trying to find the dragon snuggler that I have listed, which is what I do when I'm at the market, when I'm checking someone out and they have a giraffe and two dinos and a dragon dinosaur, whatever, right? They have a bunch of stuff. I type in manually. I don't manually type in the price because I already have everything set up in Square. I have to search like for the name of the product, which can sometimes take me a minute. And I want to make checkout easier for customers and myself. So I think I mean, I can't have, I think it'd be cool if Square had like a barcode reader that you could scan like barcodes. That'd be so cool. I haven't figured that out yet. If that's a thing, 
that's cool. But I, I haven't seen like a barcode section where I can like add barcodes to every product. I mean, that's a little bit, that might be a little bit too much for me. But SKUs, I think I'm excited to use SKUs to like identify the products and make it easier to find them when someone helps me uh, check out so that it's more user friendly, not just for me. Um, especially for holidays, because right now it's not too bad, right? But then in the holiday season, when we're selling like a bunch of stuff, can't even keep up with the people walking up at our booth, um, we'll need help. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I won't need help. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing right now this morning, and those are all the, thi oh, not those things. But the things that I showed you are all the things I just made and that I'm working on, and I'm thinking of making a bunch of bunnies. I made a bunch of jelly bean bunnies that all sold out last time. I don't know if I wanna make jelly bean bunnies again. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Crochet friends. Uh, it's my lunch break. What's in the lunch bag? Or crochet bag. Uh, right now, I've got some white and neutral yarn because I was working on the ostrich. Uh, so I had that yarn in here. And I think I'm going to make a little bunny. I just got a message. I got tagged in a free pattern on Instagram by Moon Jelly Crochets, I believe it is. And it is a free pattern by Creations. I'll have to put it here, but I'm going to make it. So we'll see how quickly I can do this. My 30 minute break is over. I spent half of the time untangling my ball of yarn because it was just so messy, but uh, it was by Stitched Creations. It's a free Instagram pattern. I modified, so I took out like one of the increasing rounds so that it was smaller, so that it's like seriously like the cutest little tiny bunny head. It reminds me of the pocket pal that I recently made with Oak Hill stitches, but it's just more round because there's an extra round of single crochet. So just like a little round pocket pal for people to hold, but I really like the ears, how they're a part of the plushie. And I did embroider the eyes instead of, um, I didn't bring safety eyes with me on my lunch. So I don't have pink yarn for the nose or the safety eyes, but I think I'm going to use this to make quite a couple of these tonight in different colors, like Easter egg colors. Not so that I have a bunch of Easter stock, but just so I have like little tiny bunny, like handheld bunnies, just a couple of them because I have a lot of big stuff right now and I know I have to bring some tiny stuff. I sold out of a lot of my small stuff and some of it I'm not going to be restocking. So I don't think I'm going to be restocking some of the stuff that I had last time. Anything I had, obviously I'm carrying over, um, but I think I am going to pull the trigger, even though it's raining right now outside. I think I'm going to pull the trigger and purchase the market uh, booth. Haven't done it yet. I, I've been prepping. And I was going to do my mock-up when I got home, but it's raining outside. Hopefully it stops raining so I can do a pretty mock-up when I get home. Hey dudes, or ladies actually, I think 98% of y'all are ladies, so hey ladies. <laughs> um, sorry. I wanted to say, I told you guys before that after I made Kato and Ivy, which are the two dragons I recently did, uh, from Lemon Cat Crochet and Cozy Wonder, Crush, Cozy Wonder Cur Crochet Creations. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. But I wanted to compare them and I never did that. And now I'm like thinking about it and I realized I never showed you. So once again, okay, I, if you're sick of it, I'm sorry. But look, look, you know, look at this. Look at this. So this and look at this. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. The round count was so small and like she could be her mama. If I made a little orange one, it could be a mama. But just wanted to show you the difference. So Ivy's a little blue one and Kato is the big uh, orange one. Okay, just wanted to show you that. I'm about to price tag them. Uh, I'm still setting up the SKU numbers in square. I was able to do a little bit before work, but not much. So I'm going to go finish skewing the stuff that I want to keep regularly in inventory for markets. And I'm going to be pushing down stuff in my spreadsheet that I'm not going to be using frequently or much. Like, I'm not going to be recreating. Uh, so, I am on the lookout for some small, like, small patterns. So, I love making big things. I can't stress that enough. I love making medium to big things. I find it soothing. And, yeah, it takes longer. And financially, we can't make as much back on them. You know, I get it. Uh, with selling but it's I find it fun and I want to find new small things to sell so all the stuff that I've like I kept making like little baby whales I sold out a little baby whales and I don't think I'm gonna be restocking them they're not bad to make uh, I have I don't have a bad time making them I just don't 
I don't know if that's the direction I want to go with like the branding of my company. So, you know what I mean? I'm trying to invest my time where it should be. Uh, I really enjoy talking to you guys and I feel like coming to you guys and saying that like I'm going to stop making some of the really popular stuff for markets that might be a little bit shocking because uh, I am trying to like sell my stuff but there are a lot of people who crochet here in Florida and I don't want to get lost in the lost in the sauce you know so to keep myself out of the sauce and to keep myself in like an enjoyable crochet state I think I'm going to be taking a bit of a turn with the stuff that I offer at the shop for instance um, I know I've talked about this too, but I'm going to definitely be making in the future lots and lots of these. Like I see these in my future and not necessarily in a onesie. I think I could go with just the naked bunnies and maybe some like pretty patterns on them would be cool. But I definitely think I'm going in like a, this kind of direction with what I'm going to be carrying. And I know not everyone can afford stuff like this. So I am going to be on the... <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna be on the hunt for things I want to carry if that makes sense so I'm trying to like brand myself and I want to offer animals that people like but I feel like there have to be other patterns for things than just the super popular ones you know what I mean so I'm gonna be on the hunt for that I can smell my toast burning <laughs> one second I thought we could open some packages together. So I ordered some stuff for the display. Oh, you know what? This may be boring for you guys. <laughs> now that I'm realizing all the stuff that I bought, it might be kind of boring, <laughs> but I uh, got canopy side walls. So I got three walls um, and they match the top color of my tent. So the sidewall, my idea for that was to make it like a private store and to keep the weather out because it rains here a lot. So we're getting into the wet season. I want to keep my stuff dry. I want to keep people feeling like it's a comforting, like welcoming space. Not that like being open is not welcome, but it does cause some obviously interactions with your neighbors, which is gets good, builds community. But you don't always, you, you know, it creates some privacy. Hopefully people shopping, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm ordering sidewalls. We'll try them out and I'll let you guys know how they do. Uh, and got these hooks. Oh, I'm showing you and you can't see anything. I got these hooks. Um, what I'm thinking is I got the like grid wall, um, the CNC grid. So I'm going to put these on the CNC grids. I'm going to hook one half and then it's an S hook. So then on the other half of the hook, I'm going to put the little plushie arms, I think, for like the snugglers so I can display those better. Or plushies in general. If it's a bigger plushie, I can put its arms um, hanging, if that makes sense, so that uh, they're displayed better. So that's my idea with getting these hooks. I'll show you when I actually use them in the mock-up. So later we'll see that. I was going to do the mock-up tonight, but it was too rainy and too wet outside and the it was gloomy. So it's not a good day for a mock-up I'm hoping tomorrow I can actually show you guys oh and this is also not very fun oh I'm so dis I feel like it's so disappointing for you guys not disappointed for myself though because this sure is fun so what I ordered so I ordered these large um traditional uh safety eyes because all I had uh, before was kawaii, so I have like the middle facing. So these are traditional safety eyes. And I got like the really large size. I don't know what size they are. I'm excited to use extra large eyes on even things that are not very large. I feel like that'll look really cute. So safety eyes came like this. These are business expenses, okay? I got another riser, here she is. This is a big riser. So I've got now two big risers and two of the short risers from TJ Maxx. So I'm thinking it'll help separate the prices if I've got the $15 on the big risers or even bigger plushies on these risers and then the a different price on the other risers so that each riser can have like a price, if that makes sense. So it, it can be grouped 
instead of being, I'm not going to individually tag these items, if you know what I mean. So this will save hopefully some time and it'll help separate the products because right now I don't have enough risers to separate all the products I have in the categories. Okay, I'm going to play a game of League because I feel deprived and I just need to get, I want, I feel like playing. So I'm going to play a game and then I will do my pricing list and then I will crochet. That sounds, that sounds good. Hey, as I'm filling out the spreadsheet tonight and putting all the tags on the newer items that I made, I to the total quantity that I have right now is 54 items at $1,188, which if you watched my last market video, I had like 130 items just about. So going from 130 to 54 is a bit intimidating. Uh, I have a lot of big priced items because I did a lot of pattern testing, as you guys know, but it is a little bit uh, intimidating to go into a market with 54 items of inventory. Even if I sell a couple, it'd be worth it for me to go. I am thinking about medium sized items I can make to increase that number. Since it is Wednesday night, I have a couple days to, well, three nights to do it. So um, now that I have put everything in, I will show y'all what I do. Hey guys, uh, it is now morning. I just wanted to show you, I worked on some free little patterns. Um, this will be releasing soon. I can't remember the, uh, the creator's name. I'll put it here. Little free birds uh, keychains. And then I made these little free frog pattern. So instead of, I don't know, we'll see. Just little frogs. Uh, see how they do. I have a pink one too. This one doesn't really look like a frog, so because it's pink, but I'll put it with the green ones and we'll see how that does. Hey guys, it's Thursday. I'm on my lunch break. I forgot my yarn bag today, so unfortunately I can't crochet anything right now. Uh, but I just got a message and the, let me just say, okay, the first bunny I ever crocheted was a purchased bunny pattern. Uh, from the Studio Stitch CA, okay? And I just got chosen to help pattern test her new bunny for her, and it's like the first bunny I ever created was that, you know, Studio Stitch CA. So I can't believe that this has become like reality, that it, I feel like this is such an amazing opportunity. All of them are amazing opportunities, okay? But this has just another level to it because I bring I bring at least one of those uh, bunnies to every market so you'll always see a Studio Stitch CA bunny they have like the bigger heads so I'm really excited to pattern test her bell uh, there it's a set of two I don't know I think I'm honestly gonna make both of them I'm so excited I am so extremely excited and I was kind of nervous because I had applied for uh, plenty of of t you know, I, I just keep applying and then whatever happens, happens. And I'm, I'm making sure I have enough time to do everything. I, but I was nervous because I had, I'm, I ran out of tests. Like I finished all my testing, so it felt good. But now it's just kind of like, okay, make whatever you want to make. And I was going to go look back at patterns that I know I like, that I can rely on, that I've used, that I like. And I was going to go back and, you know, create some more bunnies. That was my goal is making more bunnies today. And I don't think this could have been a more perfect scenario situation. I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is real. So uh, I'm so sorry for rambling. Happy Friday. What's on my hook today, you might ask? Let me show you. Uh, the Studio Stitch uh, CA of starting that. I've already made, I've made this bunny before. I made this bunny quite a couple times before. So I already, I'm like, got this down. I'm used to it and this is perfect. So I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be making the hood tonight and the dress tonight. I need to make one more ear, sew her together, put her, make her pretty. But I want to just let you guys know what's going on. So I had not purchased the event yet. I had kind of a couple lined up, a couple lined up that I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go to. I'm just gonna run through the list. So number one was a maker's market, uh, which is about an hour away from me. So I was gonna think, thinking about doing a maker's market on Saturday. I've worked with these hosts before. It did well, even though it was in a slow 
money period like people weren't really spending but i still did pretty well so i was thinking about doing that saturday market there was also a school saturday event that is booked out so they they didn't have space for me but i could be put on the wait list unfortunately i didn't have the right photos to show off like my whole display i have photos of my display but not photos showing off the legs of my display and i think they wanted that included so I was unable to put myself on the wait list for the school on Saturday, so that didn't end up happening, but I did reach out to them. There was another uh, event happening on Sunday, and I applied to that, and they actually had space for vendors. So I'm gonna be going to that event, which is about 45 minutes away from me, so not too far. I had to choose between the event on Saturday, which is an hour, or four, an hour away versus the 45 minute drive, and I decided based on the fact that I know the vendors from last time and I know I'll be able to go there again if I want to and based on the fact that I've never been to this other one and if I try it and it does really well then I know which one I'm gonna be sticking with so I'm really just doing just trying out different events uh, I don't know if you guys want me to post about the events that I'm doing that I'm gonna be attending I, I thought about that because I see other makers like posting about where they're gonna be so I was thinking about maybe posting like where I'm gonna be with like the markets, but I don't know how fun that would be. I don't know if I, many of you are in Florida. I know some of you are in Florida, but I don't know if you want me to like post the events anywhere. <sighs> so I'm really excited. I just booked the ticket for the Sunday event. So I pulled the trigger, I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be well, it's gonna do well. It's sunny here, very sunny and nice and warm. It looks like it'll be a good market day. So I'm gonna be cranking out some bunnies and I'm thinking of making a lot of bunnies. I'm thinking, I'm obviously making this Studio Stitch bunny and then I think I'm gonna make Loretta Loops bunny and then there's a free pattern for bunny and I also have Bean the Bunny and then there's Buttons, which is like a little baby Etsy pattern. So I'm gonna do, I think this whole array, I might not have a bunch of every one, I might have just one of each, but now that I have Saturday to crochet, that gives me some hope that I can crochet tonight and all day tomorrow so I can prep for this uh, properly with rabbits <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna be doing that's where I'm at thank you guys so much for the support and hanging out with me so far I cannot wait to see what I'm able to create in 24 hours hey we're doing a mock-up right now so this is the new thing that I got uh, which is a wire peg stand uh, which my goal is to have it hold bigger plushies and give them um, give them a chance to be in a better setup so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just gonna set everything up and hopefully show you guys what it looks like okay the sun's going down so I just have to show you but there's gonna be the edge of the tent would be here and then the other edge of the tent would be out here so people would be able to walk in both sides but this would be the front uh, this is a new banner pretend like I pretend like I have um, a tablecloth okay just pretend so people would walk in here and see the payments accepted I uh, got the fishy stuff going on. I'll have business cards and stickers in there. I, it looks like so chaotic because I'm doing this so fast before the sun goes down. Uh, and then these are all gonna be $15. Uh, here's my little sign that fell. I might have to redo that little sign, but $15 for anything there. These are all as marked items. And this starts to get into the other side. So this would be facing that way. And this is where I'm gonna have my checkout. So I think I'm gonna have my chair back here and I'll have my POS, uh, what's it called? iPad here, so, and facing this way. You guys can see, I uh, got business cards and care, ca care cards. I'm gonna have to print out more care cards tonight. And these are, oh, that's upside down. Those are thank you bags. You might be thinking, Robin, what are you doing right now? It's nighttime and your market's tomorrow and yeah i'm thinking the same thing so it's a garden party market and they told you to dress up like a garden party and I, that was told to me last minute so i ordered a dress on amazon it got here today i tried it on and it is horrendous it looks so bad um so i can't wear that and i don't have anything else like gardeny um they said that dressing up really helps the theme and I don't know so to be an adherent uh what's the word vendor I want to wear a nice dress so I'm gonna go to TJ Maxx really quick and just find um an affordable dress that I can wear for tomorrow option one option 
last minute printing some thank you cards and one more sheet and price tagging a couple things happy market day it is sunday march 10th i think daylight savings happened last night because i was up till like 3 30 in the morning and i don't feel like it was 3 30 in the morning i feel like it was 2 30 in the morning so i haven't like looked into that yet but um I want to show you what I made last night. I mean, you're going to find out anyway, but I might as well just bring you along. So, okay. Uh, like I said, I was working on a bunch of bunnies. So, um, this is Buttons, the bunny from Lolly May, I believe it is. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I hated making this bunny um, to a point where halfway through, I don't know if it was just because it was late at night and I was tired and you don't want to read a new pattern like when you're tired, but this sucked to like read. Um, and it could just be because it's the first time I made the pattern. So take my thoughts with a grain of salt, but I just feel like this was not a fun project for me personally, but I had to finish it. So I finished it. And then this is the cutest thing well i know there's cuter things but i really like this sitting bunny i like the proportions and i like the eyes um this is supposed to be a flower sitting bunny i can't remember who the pattern creator is right now it's the first time i've ever made that bunny pattern um that was really cute so now to get ready for the market i have my snacky snacks packed i'm gonna bring it in this bag uh, so I'm going to bring my snacks. I'm going to bring whip. <sighs> Guys, last night <laughs> I stayed up and made um, price like pricing signs because after I did my mock-up, I knew what I needed. So I made little pricing signs and I made more of the thank you cards. The thank you cards that say I am delicate. I need to be hand washed because some of my stuff, you know, I don't want them in the washing machine. <sighs> and then something I can't even get to in this video, this will have to be next week, uh, but I got a yarn Michaels package and that came ridiculously fast, by the way. I ordered it, when did I order that? Friday and I got it Saturday. That's what it feels like. Or maybe I ordered it Thursday and got it Saturday, but regardless, that is so quick and I didn't think that Michaels would deliver that fast, so now I'm like, oh, I thought I'd have time to run through some more yarn and I don't, so... There's that. I'm gonna get ready for the market. I counted my cash last night. So cash goes in here. Um, making sure I have enough in there and then that I, you know, deposit the other from last time that I don't need. And I'm charging the iPad because I'm planning on using it like a like register today, which is the first time I'm doing that. Normally I use my phone, but I'm going to use it like a register. So we will see how that goes car check i am on my way to the market this is actually gonna be the first time that i go without a partner so my best friend's gonna help me set up and then she's gonna leave so uh i will let you guys know how this goes i'm a bit nervous to man the stand by my by myself but okay we're on our way and i actually have like way less stuff this time so i have like one table and the farming stand and we will see how this goes just i'm praying and if you're market prepping i'll be praying for you and if you have a market soon good luck you got this we're gonna do well okay <laughs> Market's just starting and Kim helped me set up. Thanks, Kim. Me. <laughs> and it's my first time using this as a register. This is the view. Okay, you guys 
guys already know, uh, this is my instant adrenaline uh, serotonin rush after the market. Uh, I can't believe all this just happened. I will say I did better financially at the carnival, okay? But this time I connected with a lot more people and I have multiple custom orders and I really feel like I learned something which makes this invaluable whether or not financial gain was involved. I'm so excited to share what I learned with you guys and I can't believe what happened happened today if that makes sense. Uh, I look like a, a mess. I look like a mess <laughs> but I I can't wait to shower and then talk to you guys. Um, also, just wanted to comment while I still look like this. I know I look like a pink Dorothy. Okay, I realized that after I was already there and looked like this. But the theme was garden party and I feel good anyway. So, uh, pink Dorothy it is. And nothing goes better with my stand than pink Dorothy. So, uh, you guys see my double chin. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm excited to share with you. I'm excited to go over the numbers. Um, add up this cash and see where we're at. I'm so excited. So uh, really quickly, I just wanted to let you guys know, I um, basically set my whole tent up by myself and then Kim came and helped me put the plushies out and do some of the like grid wall stuff. And then I did the whole breakdown by myself. It took me 32 minutes. So I broke everything down by myself. It was just one table with the new like farm stand thing. And by the way, I absolutely love that. I don't even really care that the bins don't necessarily fit with it. I really like the way that it looked. Oh, I was covering the microphone that whole time. I don't even know if you heard what I said. Uh, but I was able, I honestly, I didn't have the painted like safety eyes, which are what I'm putting on every, almost every plushie now. And I made a lot of body parts, which I'll have to go home and finish up. But I was able to crochet a lot actually, even though I was pretty steady. There were some slow bits where I was able to crochet. I hardly ate. I brought a bunch of snacks to keep myself like, you know, fed because I didn't want to spend money. I'm trying to not spend money at the market, which I failed and spent money anyway. I'm excited to show you what I bought, but um, I brought a bunch of snacks. I brought a fig bar. I brought two bottles of water. I brought a banana. I brought a sandwich. I brought peanut butter pretzels. I brought a lot of stuff and I literally had one of the fig, one of the two fig bars. Like it came in a pack of like two and I ate half. So I'm hungry and I, um, obviously you could see I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to you guys and do the breakdown, uh, and the thoughts part of the video. I feel like those are always really fun. The vendors next to me were fabulous. They've been doing markets for a while. It sounds like they were very friendly. And now I have new friends in the, in the craft community who are around my area. So, you know, if they're in a market, it'll help, you know, I can possibly attend the markets they're going to. The vendor for this market, I'm sorry, this is terrible. I'm just gonna, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Does anyone else refuse to make multiple trips? I refuse to make multiple trips. <laughs> the breakdown. Oh, I am so excited to talk to you guys about this. By the way, I'm gonna be on my iPad. So if you see me looking down or looking around, I'm looking at my iPad. I have a spreadsheet uh, that I purchased from Crochet with Bay. It was $20 that I used to determine the cost of my materials and how much profit I have. So I will be looking at that to share with you guys the information today. I will also be providing the photos with how much I charged for each item on the side here. And I will have a link in the description with all the patterns that I used. Some of them that are not released yet, I can't have a link but as soon as they do release, there will be a link, don't worry. Okay, let's get into what sold. By the way, this is gonna be going from highest price item to lowest price item. So starting off, I had Minnow, the Dragon, which is a pattern test for Cozy Wonder Crochet. Minnow is now released. I had a price tag of $90. I had two Minnows, neither Minnow sold. I had Belle, the Fairy Bunny, which is a pattern test that I'm doing right now, so it's not released yet. For the Studio Stitch CA, I had a price tag of $80 on Belle, and she did not sell. Almost, but did not. I had Kato the Dragon, which was another pattern test for Lemon Cat Crochet. I had a price tag of $70 on Kato, and Kato sold, which was an amazing purchase. Along with Kato, there were actually three big items in one purchase. 
There was also Penelope the pig wearing bell bottoms. Penelope was $70. That was also a pattern test for Am I by Abby. I had one Penelope, I sold Penelope. And then I had a large bunny in a dress, which was the Studio Stitch CA. This is not a pattern test, this is me purchasing the pattern. And I made one of those in a dress. That one sold for 70, sorry, $65 in the dress. I had another bunny in a onesie, which was Am I by Abby's pattern that I purchased. And that one did not sell. That one had a price tag of $70 because the effort that goes into them is different, which is why I price them differently. And then I had two Filo bunnies priced at $65, which was a pattern test for Knots by Meadow. Neither Filo sold. I had a medium, or sorry, yeah, I had a giraffe, which was a free Instagram pattern at $45. The giraffe did not sell. And then I had two Mama Made Mini Snugglers. I had Una the Unicorn and Dusty the Dragon. They did not sell their $45 price tag. And then I had Huey the Highland Cow, which was uh, a pattern test <laughs> um, for At Dawn Crochet, I believe. I had a price tag of $45 on Huey. Did not sell. Almost sold, but did not. I had... Samba the Elephant, which was a fun make that I did this week. Samba did not sell, but a lot of people loved Samba. So a lot of attention, no one pulled the trigger. I had two of the Groovy Flower Buddies by Raven and Jade uh, for $30. No one bought those. I had Bobo the Goblin, which is a free pattern. I had that for $30, no one bought Bobo. I had two princesses, which were Palm and Posy modifications. Um, she doesn't actually have a pattern for these. I just used bits and pieces of her body and then created the hair and dresses myself. Nevertheless, I had a price tag of $55 on both princesses and neither one sold. And then I had uh, one large merbaby, which was a Palm and Posy merbaby, and she did not sell. Her price was $45, the one with the, with the black hair with them. Um, ponytails. And then I had two small cows from Madeline May Co. for $25. One cow sold. I think it was the yellow, the yellow cow. And then I had Ivy, the snuggler dragon, which was tiny. Uh, you guys saw her in this video. I had two of them for $25. No one purchased Ivy. Then I had Bean the Bunny. I actually made Bean the Bunny a shamrock Bean the Bunny, so it was green. I had made this yesterday, I believe. I didn't even really take good photos of it. I took a, like a funny, or not a funny, but I made a reel about me making it and how long it took me to make Bean the Bunny. So if you're interested in knowing how long that took, go check out my Instagram. But I made shamrock Bean the Bunny for $25 and that sold. And then I had uh, a like a season doll. It's a, a testing pattern that's actually in the works right now. I was not even finished with the test. I just made the doll with the dress with the cloak. I didn't even put the element on it yet. I hadn't even taken pictures for the pattern test yet and I put a price tag of $22 on it and the, it, the muñeca, the, the doll, I think it, yeah, sold. So $22. I don't, I have a picture of it, but $22. Okay. Uh, then I had uh, the Stingray for $22, which was a free Instagram pattern, did not sell the Stingray. I had the Mushy Boy, which was a free Pinterest pattern for $20, did not sell Mushy Boy. I had one medium lamb left, which was a Loretta Loops cow pattern that I modified and I just changed the colors around, made it a sheep or lamb, did not sell. I had one large fried egg and I sold my last large fried egg for $20. I had two tulip book covers, which could have been, it could be a Kindle cover, could be an iPad cover, but two of them for $20, they did not sell. I finally put them in the right, I feel like they have a good spot now, by the way. <laughs> so those are displayed well. I had an ostrich, which was a crochet by Janina pattern, which technically it's not released yet and she didn't want us to post about it. So y'all will hear about it first on YouTube, but it's a, um, 
Stardew Valley ostrich. So that sold today for $18. I had um, four small turtles, which were free pattern on Instagram. I just haven't made more turtles. I do have other patterns that I want to try out for turtles, but this is just what I had left over from last market. I had, I think, four of them left that I sold two of the four and they were $15. And then I had um, one bird left, which was the flamingo squishy bird. Uh, that did not sell. That had a price tag of $15 on it. That was a free Instagram like bird pattern. I had one Mabel the chicken. Mabel the chicken sold for $15. I had Lennox the Bee, which was a Poema Studio pattern purchased on Etsy for $15. I had two Lennoxes. I sold both bees today, which I've had Lennox in my inventory for a hot second now. She's been my slowest sale. Technically, I, I've originally made four of them back in like October, and they still it's we're going into March now, so it took that long for me to sell four Lennox the Bees, but I think they're the most unique bee pattern. So um, it was nice to carry them, but I don't know if I'm going to continue carrying them. I might try and make a smaller version. I don't know. I like Lennox, though. I think she's very cute. And then I had two or three crocodiles, which is technically a free pattern from Natalie's Crochet Creations. Had them listed for $15. I do not recommend the free pattern for her. Uh, she even says in her comments that there were mistakes. It was her first pattern. Go purchase her pattern if you want like updated notes. So I did go and purchase it. I recommend you purchase it if you do want the crocodile. Using the free version, you'll end up with something that looks different that you might have questions on. So you might as well just purchase it. It's only a couple dollars. I take that pattern and I shrink it down by a couple rows and that's how I get my crocodile for $15. No one bought them today, but they're, they're hot here in Florida. So I had one jelly bean bunny left from my last uh, carnival and I sold that jelly bean bunny for $15. It's a free YouTube pattern. I had three triceratops from Club Crochet and I sold none of the dinosaurs today. I had one leggy froggy, which I actually made while I was at the event. I made a large leggy froggy. I had it listed for $15. No one purchased the leggy froggy. I had two small fried eggs. No one bought the small fried eggs for $10. I had two Hello Kitties. Someone bought Hello Kitty for $10. I had one, um, one sea turtle, which was a pattern test that I did for Crochet by Callie, and that sold today for $10. I made it out of crushed velvet, so it was really tiny, and it was really quick to work up, so that was a great, great sale. $10. And then I had six of the Pocket Pals. I don't think I sold any of those. Yeah, I didn't sell any of the Pocket Pals. I had six of them for $10. None of them sold. I had a total of 12 keychains and the keychains are between like bees and little leggy froggies and um, little birds. The little birds are a free pattern coming out by Andy Light Create Creations, I think. Uh, that one's coming out soon for the little birds, but I had them all clubbed together. So all of them together was 12 items. I sold five out of the 12 keychains for $8 a piece for keychains. Normally the items by themselves without the keychain, I was charging $5, but with the keychain, people do not mind paying $8 for a little keychain with the animal on it. So that's kind of the gauge that I found. People really don't mind spending a couple more dollars when it is like functional. But if I didn't add the keychain, I couldn't sell that item for $8. And that is all the stuff that I brought. So that all has a total quantity of around 75 items, I give or take, because I don't inventory 100%. <laughs> um, it takes a lot of time to detail in your inventory every single time, so I, I just try and subtract from what I sold last time. Sometimes I miss something, so about 75 items, totaling $1,300 of like retail costs. If I sold everything on my table, it should be $1,300. I sold a total of 
22 items, which was a total of $480. So that was my gross sales from cash and card of my 74 items. So 74 items I started with and I ended up with um, 22 sold, which is pretty good considering it only brought 74 items uh, out of the 15 sales. Um, then I had the fees. So $12 was square, 65 was my booth, 95 was my materials, and that leaves me a total of around $320 profit. Um, I share these numbers with you guys just so you guys know, at least if you're thinking about starting, starting a crochet business or bringing your crochet to markets, or if you're just beginning, like I'm just beginning my journey. I've only been going to markets for a couple months now, but I have learned a little bit and I do feel like I can, you know, I was sharing my experience when it was my first market, but now I'm sharing my experience after multiple markets. And I hope to just keep sharing with you guys. I feel like it gives you guys some perspective and it helps me, like it motivates me to see other people and see their growth and see how they're doing. And maybe if they're going through a rough patch, like what they, what their reflection was. Um, I had a really good market last time. I had a really good carnival at my last showing I brought 130 items to that show and I ended up selling 89 items which is insane so that in mind because I sold so many items I knew I only had 74 today but that didn't stop me I still signed up I knew I wanted to go to a market this week I really was feeling like having the interaction with people knowing that people really loved my stuff still I also out of my 74 items a lot of my stuff was big so I had a lot of big items which made me nervous uh, for sales I was worried people might not want to invest in such big pr purchases uh, they are big purchases they were pattern tests and I wasn't even necessarily charging for my time obviously because I was testing but I charged for my materials and some of the hours of labor because it was so many hours that went into these pieces so it was what I felt like charging for them if you go ahead and make these projects and you charge differently that's okay we're all making our own stuff and we all can decide our own prices because we're making them so uh, I'm here to support you and I want to share some t um, pointers with you some things that I reflected on uh, I feel like I had an amazing day even though my profit was only 320 that is 320 more dollars to go spend on some yarn <laughs> and uh, to go support other artists so I had a really good time and I don't think that deters, you know, it shouldn't deter you. I went to a market where I made literally $50. There's a little mosquito, it'll eat me. I made, I feel like I made not even $50 after everything and that was still worth it. So you always, you learn, you, you do better next time. So uh, there were a couple things I wanted to touch on with how things went. Number one, I used S-shaped hooks on my CNC secret to help hook up arms for the plushies. So I had them underneath arms, so like the snugglers, which I've had an awkward time displaying snugglers personally so that they like show well. And I put S hooks under their arms and they were on the scene secrets and that really helped show off the whole plushie. People were able to see the price tag and if they wanted to take it off, they could, but it deterred little children from ripping them off, which was also a good bonus. So it deterred people from taking them down, but it also let them see everything. Uh, so it gave them more attention than before. So I liked using the S-shaped hooks. I did order them and I did use them and I liked them. I had that new riser, the large riser that I showed you guys. Unfortunately, they didn't send screws for me to assemble it. So the night before the market, I went to assemble it and I couldn't do that. And I, it was too late for me to go to Lowe's. I was up till like three in the morning. So that wasn't very feasible for me. I didn't end up using it. I'm going to have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and go buy some screws, but the riser will be great in a future display. Just couldn't use it on this one. And then I really enjoyed using my iPad for my POS. I've consistently, because we all have iPhones, right? So I've been using my iPhone for everything. I use it for taking videos. I use it for messaging my family. I use it for taking photos of my products. I use it for making everything. I use it for patterns. So I use my my phone for a lot. I use it for square. So I was using it for square at events and it really was like locking up my phone. Um, I couldn't use my phone for other things. I couldn't X, Y, and Z. I couldn't talk to my family or, you know, had to make sure I was connected. So I got an iPad stand on, I was looking into a lot of stuff. I was looking into the newer like square registers, like the square terminal, which I like, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't think I like 
necessarily like I like how the screen will show people the price but I don't like how I have to go in there and do the items on the screen unless I can do that on my iPad and then it'll transfer the information to the terminal I don't really like that but I do like there's little stands for the square readers and I think those look cute and that looks professional and I think that with the iPad stand really was handy I'm gonna link the iPad stand below because I really loved it um I didn't really take a thorough video of me showing you guys how I used it but after I would put it in on my square like do 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 like how much it costs I would hit charge I would just pull, like put up my hand with the little square reader people would tap and then I would push the screen down and they could they could do the receipt stuff just like how you do it normal like even like restaurants or like I know I go to boba shops and boba shops do that so I really found that swivel system for my iPad helpful it was freed up my phone I was able to use my phone for patterns so I was like create um, crocheting creating while I was at the market and it didn't hinder my sales not one bit I was able to leave the pattern on the table and it was also more professional because I wasn't like on my phone I was able to leave my pattern on the table people could see it was a pattern and then leave my crochet project there and then ring them out and it was really it was nice for people to see me do the craft and then for me to be able to have professional like register so even though it was like a makeshift register uh, it definitely felt more professional to have something rather than just me looking in a bag for bags like I, I just had a like a Publix reusable bag that I was using the, for plastic bags and it really helps uh, be more professional so sorry about that <laughs> moving on so after that then let's see I wanted to tell you guys that I was able to break down my whole stand in 30 minutes I know I told you guys earlier because I was so proud of myself but I was able to break down my entire stand by myself in 30 minutes get in my car and leave that was an accomplishment I feel like I definitely hustled and I knew at this and I know at this point like where things where I want them to go how to make them all fit together in my car and I feel like I finally got it down so I got it down to a T I packed up my car in 30 minutes that feels so good um I wanted to share a tip from the creator next to me he was so I had two people I had one person who like thrifted items and resold them and I actually ended up purchasing something from her I bought a flower pot but it has a big smiley face on it and it's my papa's birthday tomorrow and it's perfect I didn't get him a gift I was like waiting to see the right thing and that was the right thing so I had the shot was the person next to me I purchased that that was like the first thing first purchase of the day for both of us I purchased that from her and it was good so that's a birthday gift and then the creator next to me on the other side was an artist he makes bird paintings and beautiful beautiful artwork so I was in between two really creative people obviously when you go to markets you're gonna be between creative people and both of them were veterans so they've both been to events before they both had little tidbits of information and I wanted to pass something on to you that really I found helpful so um, the gentleman next to me said um, marketable dot art is a website that you can use to find events um, and it'll tell you how busy they are how much the fee typically is it gives you some it's like crafters or people who attend the markets can say how it was so it's kind of like a review place for people who go to markets uh, highly recommend that I did take a look at it I obviously haven't submitted a review yet but I've looked through the list and I really it's really helpful so that website uh, to go in and see events in your area unfortunately it's only for certain states so that keep that in mind I did like look at it and it's not for every state there's only like a handful of states that this website accommodates for but that's a really cool thing that I found and at least in Florida it looks like that's an option so wanted to pass along the information I feel like that was really helpful and um, another thing that I wanted to mention that I noticed after all the markets that I've been doing, I noticed people, especially like best friends or like young kids or like teenage girls, people normally come to these events in pairs or in trios, like they normally come with their friends. Traveling Pony Studio, she crochets, she also has another job it sounds like but she crochets and does marketing in her area, not in the same state I believe, but she always makes it a point to make two of every item. And sometimes I don't like to make two of every item. I don't like that item necessarily, or I don't, I don't know. So I had not committed to making duplicates or a specific set number of each item that I bring, but I think I'm definitely going to work on making two of each item and bringing two of each item for items that I know I want to carry because people like to purchase things in groups. So I found it very, I think that information is very helpful. And I think like offering that tip to you guys, letting you guys know, like I found this out 
and I know that people go shopping in pairs and people normally want like bestie items so I think that's what I'm going to start doing for my business and hopefully that helps you guys if you do decide to do that so for instance I have one samba I'm going to make a couple sambas to make like little you know what I mean multiples of each item uh and that's about it I had a really good time I didn't end up bringing any of my safety eyes I didn't have them packaged yet I have them all painted but none of them are packaged so I was gonna bring some of those to offer to people who crochet but no one ended up being crochet there I was the only crochet artist which might have helped my sales today it might have been slower had I not um, be, been the only one so I was lucky in that sense this was a juried market so I had to apply and they don't accept you right away normally if you apply the ones I've gone to I got accepted right away to all the other ones so this one I had to apply say what I made and then they sent me an email a couple days later saying hey you can come to our market we want you here so that was cool it was my first like juried market I didn't have to submit um, a huge application it wasn't much more difficult than the ones I normally go to um, I am going to be looking into possible farmer's markets around me. I don't know if that's going to be the scene that I should be going to, but it's always helpful to try it out. And I did tell you guys about the school. I don't want to get eaten by a mosquito. I told you guys about the school that had a wait list. I think I'm going to apply to their, be on their wait list. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm going. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you so much. I think we're almost at 1500 subscribers. That's crazy. And we're almost at 500 on Instagram. I really appreciate all the support and you guys hanging out with me. I love talking to you and I love the comments later and just like replying to you guys and being a part of this community. Thank you for this corner of the internet. Thank you. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. Mm -hmm.